Hey everyone, this is another example of our Rexy Poker Graphs where we have the original graph right here, s y equals to fx, and you want to sketch the graph of 1 over fx. And there's a lot of things going on right here, right? So you notice that the graph is split into three major components, the left, the right, and then this part here. But actually, that's not really the right way to go about it. In fact, what you should do is, you want to see what kind of asymptotes that you get at the end and then split the graphs accordingly. All right, so first of all, we have the asymptote at y equals to one. As such, we know that it, we will still have the asymptote at y equals to one because one over one is simply one. All right, so we again get back the asymptote at y equals to one. All right, now what next? What do I look out for? Is there an oblique asymptote? Is there any more vertical asymptotes? Now, clearly we don't really know in terms of we don't know. I mean, there won't be any oblique asymptotes because, well, if you look at the graph, there's no point or no part of the graph that approaches zero. All right, so there is no oblique asymptote. But are there any vertical asymptotes? And to do that, you check for any x-intercepts in our original graph. Because if we have an x-intercept in our original graph, we will then have 1 over 0 in our fx, and that we know is undefined, and hence will give us a vertical asymptote. And because we have the x-intercept at x equals to minus 2, we then have a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 2. All right, then from here we can then actually figure out that the graph is going to be split into two major portions, to the left of the asymptote and to the right of the asymptote for the vertical one. Okay, so let's start with the left of the asymptote because we're just looking at this portion of the graph right here. So again, look at the fx graph as the denominator. How is the denominator changing? Now, it changes from x equals to minus 2, starting at 0, to all the way to 1, which means that at the early parts from x equals to minus 2, this number is incredibly big. Because your value is something like 0 0.01, 0 0.1, your denominator is that, and your value would then be extremely large, which means that this will start from infinity and then approaches 1 from the top side. Because at this value here, it's 0 0.9 getting very, very close to 0 0.99. It's very close to 1, but it'll be bigger than 1 after you apply 1 over fx. Then from here, what next? All right. So we then consider the graph to the right of the asymptote, and we look at the early stages first. Okay. Now, we know that initially, the graph has a asymptote at x equals to minus 1 and 1. That means we'll get a, a uh, intercept at x equals to minus 1, 0, and also at 1, 0, all right? Okay, which means that if you look at this graph as well from the left portion there to here, you notice that it's going to start from infinity, right? Because at the early stages, it is the denominator is incredibly small, your 1 over fx will be very large. So you can start from infinity and you get very close to 0. But because this is an asymptote, initially it becomes an x-intercept, so actually your graph would then cut through here. Okay? And then from here, you will just go to the negative region. So now we consider the negative region. We have a maximum point at minus half, minus 3, which then means that we have a minimum point at minus half, minus 1 over 3. All right, don't forget any point a comma b as long as b is not 0 would become a comma 1 over b. In this case we have 1 over minus 3. So our point, let's say the point is somewhere around here, our point would then have a maximum point because it's a, sorry it's a max, it was a maximum point, it becomes a minimum point and now it'll go back up from here. Okay, now one thing to take note is we had the point 0 minus 4, so we then we start with the point at 0 minus 1 quarter. That means we have to cut the inter that means the point is actually minimum points before the uh, y-axis, and now we get up and you'll intersect at x equals to 1, comma 0. Then from here, right, it's actually quite obvious. So now we're done with this part down here. Alright, because at this part down here we know that it will intersect at 1, 0. Now we look at this portion here. It started off at infinity, that means it starts close to zero, and it'll approach one. So from here we just simply go up and away from like this. And this will be the transformation of one over fx, 
when if you look at these two joining, you know that this approach is zero in the original, uh, this approach infinity in the original graph, in the one over fx, this value will approach zero, and eventually it will actually intersect at zero, or rather, where y equals to zero, right here. All right, and of course, take note that your intersections, in this case, y intercept, will remain as y intercepts. It's just that you have a reciprocal value, which is in this case minus one over four. So there we have it, the second example of our reciprocal functions.